I live in Bristol, but I work at Jersey Zoo, so I'm heading on a work trip there. Come with me. A bit of a chaotic start. I realised I forgot my passport, so I had to get the taxi driver to turn around. When I was there, I couldn't find it, and then I googled it. You don't actually need a passport to go from the UK to Jersey, because Jersey's not in the UK, but is a British Channel Island. As you can see, I did manage to get on the plane using just my provisional driving licence because I'm 30 and I still haven't passed my driving test. As we were coming into land, I was very excited because the only two things I knew about Jersey Island is that the sea is blue, the sand is golden. And as we flew down, I could see that was correct and I was like, excellent, perfect, tick. After we landed, I headed straight to the zoo. Jersey Zoo was founded by Gerald Durrell, who's a famous conservationist and writer, and you might know him from the TV series, My Family and Other Animals, which is all about his life. One of the things that got me really into conservation when I was younger was Gerald Durrell and the movie, My Family and Other Animals. So he's been a huge hero of mine for a really long time. I've wanted to come to the zoo forever. So it was just amazing that the first time I ever come to the zoo, I'm actually working there. So after settling in the office, I went and found some lunch. They had this very, very tasty pulled pork and mozzarella uh, panini anything which was great here's me eating there you go first place I went was this Jewels of the Forest walk through birdhouse it was absolutely stunning I honestly felt like I was back in a rainforest uh, and I love this little bridge next up I went to the cloud forest section and I saw this sloth and it's the closest I've ever been to a sloth and they're one of my favorite animals so I was absolutely thrilled with that and on the lower level I went and visited the Andean bear which was fast asleep I absolutely loved this. I thought it's so unique for a zoo. It's just this little hut. I wandered in and it was just walls of books, which I was thrilled about. As you can see, there were secondhand books. They were really cheap, um, but unfortunately I didn't have any cash on me, so I couldn't get any. But I did see a few naturey ones that I really liked and they had a whole range of different kinds. And it's done on an honesty system, so you just chuck the money in that blue box there. They had loads of lovely grassy open areas where you could sit and I just loved the idea of getting a book, going on the grass, having a picnic and just hanging out. Next up was the reptile house, which I thought was super beautiful. First up was this endangered lesser Antillean iguana and a very cute poison dart frog. And then we also had this beautiful Cuban iguana. Now this is one of my favourite enclosures in the entire zoo because here you've got the ploughshared tortoise from Madagascar and then directly behind the enclosure it tells you the story of basically how tortoises and turtle numbers are dwindling based on the products being harvested from them. I just thought it was a really amazing bit of storytelling and really drove home the conservation message for these guys. We have the Telfair skink from Mauritius. Then I moved outside and completely fell in love with this uh, spatially unaware Galapagos giant tortoise. He was trying to get out the greenery on the other side of these barriers and just didn't have any sort of perception of the fact that he was too big. <laughs> also seemed to be having a bit of a go at rock climbing at one point. I love a zoo that puts as much thought into its plants and landscaping as it does its animals and I felt that this zoo really really did put a lot of effort into making these beautiful grounds and these beautiful habitats for wildlife. Jersey Zoo is pretty big with big enclosures for their animals but it's not so big that you can't get around it in a whole day. I really love this little tree door thing, it was just so whimsical. <laughs> it just sort of fed into the feeling of magic of the place and was also just really fun to walk through. Here we are back with the animals now. So these are the resident gorillas. I was really lucky because I turned up just as they were being fed. You can see the keeper chucking in some kind of foliage there, which they definitely seem to be enjoying. Next, I headed through this bamboo tunnel to the orangutans. And like a lot of primates at zoos, even though they had this beautiful, amazing, gorgeous uh, enclosure outside, they still chose to spend their time inside. So this orangutan is having a pretty nice time in his little basket. And then I was the only person there and it was excellent. This is the closest I've ever been to orangutan. I absolutely loved it. I spent ages there just chilling with him. And then their mate came over and joined in too. And they just sort of hung out having lunch. Didn't seem bothered by my presence and I tried not to bother them. Some tasty greens here. You can't really see because of the reflection, but this is just me living my best life with the orangutans, having the best job in the world. Then I had to go and visit some of my old favourites, geladas. I used to work at Wild Place Project in Bristol uh, with male geladas there. And this is a troop with one male, uh, the big hairy one, and then a load of females. They're very noisy and I enjoy them a lot. I absolutely love flamingos. They're so beautiful and they sound exactly like just regular ducks at the park. I absolutely love them. I could have spent ages at this enclosure. It was so tranquil. It's right in the middle of a lake. You walk down this bridge to get there and it was just so warm and sunny and peaceful. Definitely one of my favourite parts of Jersey Zoo. 
I don't know why, but it just really tickled me that there were these two random seagulls hanging out with the flamingos. The cool thing about Jersey Zoo is it seems to be kind of split into like kind of older style zoo enclosures and everything. And then this really like wild part. You just feel like you're in this really beautiful rural area and just instead of squirrels, there's lemurs everywhere. I realise that I've said this for about 11 things now, but this is one of my favourite, favourite things at Jersey Zoo, the bat tunnels. Oh my goodness, there are these fruit, Livingston's fruit bats and another type of bat that I can't remember. Um, but they were flying around these massive tunnels. They can do a full circuit if they want to. And fruit bats are one of my absolute favourites. They're so funny, so charismatic. And again, I got really lucky because I got there right at feeding time. So they're having fruit put out. And they were so cute, look, lifting the little basket to his face. Oh, nom nom, eating some apple. Oh, it was just great. I, I spent a while here and I actually got to go back and go into the tunnel um, with a keeper because uh, I just sort of begged. So that was really nice. Perks of working at a zoo. Finally managed to find the crane. I couldn't quite figure out the map there. And I adored this Lima enclosure. Um, you go out onto a pontoon on a lake and that's where I was stood filming these ringtails. And here you can see them just running back into their little home. Another really cool thing about Jersey Zoo is they have tamarins and these little primates sort of running around everywhere. I did see them, didn't manage to film them, so here's me instead. Um, here's an aardvark. I found him on day two because uh, I just completely missed the enclosure on the first day, but he was just sleeping. Went back and saw the flamingos again, had to go say goodbye to them as I was going back. Unfortunately, I only got to spend one night at Jersey. I was just there for a meeting, um, but I was back the next day. Here I was finding the macaques, so I didn't see on the first day. And again here, just showing my love for the plants around here and uh, the gardens team. Have to find them next time. And this was really cool. I just timed it really well. I happened to be walking past on my way to the exit and saw these gibbons. So the white one at the front here is the white-handed gibbon and swinging in now is the northern white-cheeked gibbon. So they're just hanging out together, moving along this rope. Um, it was a really nice spot. There's loads of places at the zoo which are just like sunny benches, shady benches, places to eat, places to eat in quiet. Um, I just really love my time here. A couple of things worth mentioning, if you head to Jersey Zoo, they have this massive charity shop in the car park. Oh my God, I only had five minutes to look around, but it was amazing. Also shout out to the graphic designer at Jersey Zoo because I loved the gift shop. I love this print so much. I got a magnet and a little wooden postcard too because I loved it so much. And then they had a few different animal designs like this. There was also tortoises, flamingos, and you can get them on coasters, mugs, tea towels, bags, everything. I just absolutely loved it. This mug is my favorite. I love this print so much. And if you know me, you know that I absolutely adore any animal or plant themed homeware. My house is just full of it. I thoroughly enjoyed my time at Jersey Zoo and I love Jersey Island. I really hope I get a bit more time to go back and explore it some more. I did get a bit of time at the beach on the evening um, and I just sort of strolled along enjoying it. And then I found a little spot to have a little nap before dinner because I need to recharge my social battery. <laughs> The sunset was absolutely stunning. Um, I'm really hoping I can maybe come on holiday or something here sometime because look at that, that's ridiculous. I would love, it looks like, I felt like I stepped out of a magazine. I would love it, love Jersey Island, love Jersey Zoo, I highly recommend you go.